Hey everyone, welcome to part 20 of the Pokemon game series in Unity. So in this video, we will implement Poison and Burn status condition. So if I use a move like Poison Powder, you can see that the enemy has been poisoned. And after the enemy's turn, he will be hurt since he is poisoned. So if you haven't watched the videos on stat boosting moves, then make sure to watch that first because we are going to build on top of things that we implemented in those videos. Special thanks to all my Patreons for making this series possible. By becoming a Patreon, you can support me in the making of the series and get some cool rewards like access to the complete project files of the series. So let's start the video. So first I'm going to create a class for status conditions. So inside scripts, inside the Pokemon's folder, I'll create a new script called condition. So this script is going to be a plain c -sharp class. And we are going to use this class not just for the status conditions, but also other types of conditions like weather conditions, etc. So that's why I didn't name this status condition. So inside this class, let's create a property for the name of the condition. And we'll also create one for the description. And we'll create another property called start message. So this will be the message shown when a Pokemon is inflicted with the status. So next, we need to create a class that will store in instances of our condition class. So inside scripts, I'll create a new folder called data. And I'll create a new script called conditions db. And this class is also going to be a plain class. And inside this class, we are going to store a list of conditions inside a dictionary. So first I'll create an enum called condition id. So this enum will be the key of our dictionary. So let's define all our status conditions here. So we have poison, burn, sleep, paralyzed, and freeze. So now inside the conditions DB, let's create a dictionary. And the key of the dictionary is going to be condition ID. And the value will be the condition class. And I'll name this as conditions. So we also need to make it static so that we can access it without creating an instance of the condition db class. So let me just make that static. And let's initialize the dictionary. Okay, so in here we can define all our status conditions. So let's start with poison. So the key will be condition id dot poison and for the value I'll create a new instance of the condition class. So let's just set the name and we'll also set the start message. So the start message is going to be something like this Pokemon has been poisoned. So right now this condition doesn't have any functionality. But before implementing the functionality, let's implement moves that can inflict status conditions and try inflicting poison to a Pokemon. So inside our move base script, in the move FX class, right now there is only one effect for boosting stats, but let's also create another one for inflicting a status condition. So we'll just use the condition ID enum so that we'll get a picker in the inspector and I'll name this as status. I'll also create a property to expose the status. Okay, so next inside our battle system script in the run more FX, if the FX have a status, then we should set that to the enemy Pokemon. 
So one thing I forgot to add is inside our condition ID enum, the first condition ID should be none so that by default a move will not set any status condition. So now inside our run move fx class, we can check if fx dot status not equal to condition ID dot none, which means this move should cause a status condition. So we should set the status on our Pokemon. So inside the Pokemon class, I'll create a new property that will store the status condition of the Pokemon. So it is going to be of type condition and I'll name it as status. Okay, and let's actually create a function to set the status. So I'll create a function called set status and it'll take a condition ID. And we can get the condition with this ID from the dictionary inside the conditions db script. So I'll call conditions db dot conditions and pass our condition ID. And we can just store it to our status property. And we can also show the start message of the status condition. So in the dialog, it will show this Pokemon has been poisoned. So for that, I'll just add the start message to our status changes queue. So I'll use base.name for the name of the Pokemon and then append it with the start message. Okay, so let's call this function inside run move fx. So I'll say target dot set status and for the condition ID I'll pass fx dot status. So let me just add comments for clarity. Okay, so now let's create a move that can cause poison and test this out. So I'll create a new move. I'll call this poison powder. So the type is going to be poison. Power is zero. Let's set the accuracy to 100 for now. And I'll set PP to 20. So the category is going to be status since this is a status move. And inside the FX, now we also have a picker for status. So I'll choose poison and the target should be four. So yeah, we have created a move that can cause poison. Let's add this to a Pokemon and test it. So I've added a few more Pokemon so that we can test our status conditions properly. I guess the series has gone too long with just two Pokemons. So let's change that. And by the way, if you decide to add more Pokemons, then make sure to fill the type effectiveness chart completely. Otherwise you'll get error when you try to run the game. Okay, so I'll also put the link in the description to a site where you can download all the sprites of a Pokemon. So let's add Poison Powder Mo to Butterfree. Okay, so we want to learn it at level 10. Let me choose Poison Powder. And in the player party, I'll make the first Pokemon Butterfree. And I can just put Charmander at the end. So yeah, Butterfree should be level 10 to use the Poison Powder. And let's try testing this. Okay, so if I start a battle. All right. If I use Poison Powder, you can see Bulbasaur has been poisoned, has been shown in the dialog box. Okay, so now a move is inflicting a status condition, but the status condition itself is not doing anything. So let's implement that next. So now let's implement the effects of the status conditions. So statuses like burn and poison should reduce the HP of the Pokemon after each turn, right? So we should be able to define a function inside our condition for doing this. So in our condition class, I'll create a new action 
I have to import the system namespace and I'll name this action on after turn and I'll also make it a property and this action should take a Pokemon as a parameter okay so now we can assign any function to the on after turn action and whenever this action is called the function assigned to it will also be called so inside the conditions db i can assign a function to the on after turn action so i can just define a function over here and it should take pokemon as a parameter since we define that in our action and we can assign it to our on after turn function so yeah i can assign it like this but to keep things more simple i am going to use lambda functions so by using lambda functions we can define the function here itself while assigning it so let me show you i can just create a function that takes pokemon as the parameter and we need to use this simple to specify that it's a lambda function and we can assign it just like this so this will make the code much more cleaner since all the logic is inside our condition instance so let me just remove this function and we'll be using lambda for all such actions so now for poison if on after turn is called then we need to reduce the hp of the pokemon by a small amount right so inside our Pokemon class, I'll create a new function called update HP and it will take the damage as the parameter. So I just have to subtract the damage from the HP. And I'll also clamp it so that it doesn't go below zero and above the max HP. So now we can use the update HP function whenever we want to reduce the HP so let's use that in our take damage function so I'll remove all this code we don't need to set fainted anymore since now we are checking that by using the HP so I'll remove all this code and just call update HP and pass the damage all right so now inside our poison status we can call pokemon.updateHP and for the damage, I'll pass Pokemon.MaxHP divided by 8. Alright, so Poison should reduce 1 by 8 of the Pokemon's max HP after every turn. And let's also add a message to our status, status changes queue. So we'll say something like Pokemon hurt itself due to Poison. So now we have to call the on after turn action once the Pokemon's turn is over. So in our battle system, inside our run move function, once the Pokemon has performed the move, we have to call the on after turn action. So we can call it directly from here, but I'm going to create another function inside my Pokemon class called on after turn. And inside this function, I'll call status dot on after turn. And for the Pokemon, I'll just pass this Pokemon. So, th so the reason why I created this function instead of calling it directly from the battle system is because in the future we will have volatile statuses like confusion and all. So we'll have to call on after turn on the volatile status also. And in the future, we might have to do this on abilities and held items and all that. So I think it's better to encapsulate it into a function. All right. So this line should work. It should call the on after turn action, but there are some problems. All statuses might not have an on after turn action, right? So a status like sleep or paralyzed won't have the on after turn action. So in that case, we'll get an error when we try to call call the action. So to solve that, we can add a question mark and then use dot invoke to call the action. So now what will happen is 
so we will only invoke or call the on after transaction if it is not null so adding a question mark after an item is actually a new feature in c sharp it's called null conditional operator what it will do is it will only execute the code to the right of it if the item on which it's applied is not null so we should also apply the null conditional operator on status so that if the pokemon does not have any status we won't get an null reference error all right so now in the battle system at the end of the move let's call source unit dot pokemon dot on after turn so after that let's show the messages that might be added to our status changes queue so i'll call show status changes and for the pokemon i'll pass the source pokemon and since the on after turn might reduce the hp we'll call the update hp function on the hud okay so we need to call it on the source unit so one problem is not all conditions might update the hp inside on after turn action so we only want to try and update the hp if the hp actually changed right so inside the pokemon class i'll create a boolean called hp changed and inside our update hp function i'll set it to true so now inside the update hp function of the hud we only want to update the hp if pokemon dot hp change is true right and after updating the hp we will set it back to false all right so there is one more case that we need to handle since the pokemon can lose hp due to statuses like poison it might also faint right so we need to check if the source unit fainted so let me just copy the code that we used to check if the target unit fainted and i'll change the target unit to source unit all right so let me just add a comment so that we understand what this code is doing so let's try testing this so if i start a battle and if i use poison powder bulbasaur should get poisoned and after bulbasaur's turn here you can see that bulbasaur is hurt by poison and its HP also got reduced. So let's test that again. Okay, so you can see that after the turn, Robosol is hurt by poison. All right, so we have implemented the poison status. So next, let's implement burn. It's almost similar to poison, so I'll just copy paste the code for the poison. I'll change, change the ID to burn. And let me change the name and the starting message. And in the case of burn, the damage taken after each turn is max HP divided by 16. All right, that's the only difference. And yeah, burn also affects the damage calculation, but We'll do that later. And I'll also change the message. And that's it. You're also done with burn. I'm not going to test this since they are pretty similar, but you can go ahead and create a move and test it out. So I'll stop the video here. And in the next video, we'll implement sleep, paralyzed, and freeze. So if you think this video is helpful, leave a like on the video and consider subscribing to the channel. That will really help me a lot. So, I'll see you in the next video.